Welcome back to Digger Detecting, guys. Welcome also to an absolute picture-perfect day. Uh, we're a bit late out of the gate. It's nearly 2 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon on a Saturday. Uh, but look, we had to work this morning. Uh, we are doing weekend work now, uh, working up until 12 p.m. on a Saturday. Uh, that's okay, though. We're just going to spend the afternoon uh, detecting this old house site. And it's not all that old. And we have been here a couple of times once before. However... Uh, I just caught up with the landowner, uh, landholder of this site the other day. Uh, funnily enough, he was actually concreting my backyard. And I said to him about another site uh, that I detect of his. And, well, he actually said to me, uh, mate, I've got a brand new property. Uh, you can go and check it out if you'd like. Uh, funnily enough, though, when he gave me the address, I said to him, uh, I actually had permission through the previous landholder to come here and detect. So even though you're the new landholder, I've actually detected it prior uh, with the old landholder. So what Matt did say, though, is he said he's been doing a lot of cleaning up. All these uh, box sawn hedges that were uh, originally around here when we come here last time, well, as you can see, they've all been cleaned up and cleared away. So we are going to uh, give this a bit of a go because we were never able to access it last time we were here. So we'll give this a new area a bit of a go, see what we can find. And today, a bit of a surprise, we are running the Mine Lab Manticore. And that's something that I've been hanging to get on for a while. I've been on the, uh, the gold for quite a while. I was going to say coins and relics, but we haven't. We've been off the coin relic for a while. So I'm looking forward to getting on it today and checking out this new house site. We're going to give it a go with young Z-Man here, see what we can find. What do you reckon, Saz? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Let's get the manticore out and let's make a start. All right, we've got the manticore out of the car and I think this is as good a spot to start as any. As you can hear, we've got a ton of signals in the ground. He's been burning off over here. So look, we're just going to pick pieces up as we go, eliminate out what's in this pile. So there's our first target there. Coming in around a 40 or a 50 or higher, 60. So nice bit of brass or copper piping. And there was another signal. Well, that sounds nice, Zez. What is this one, mate? Trying to look with a shovel. You see, have, have a dig there. Oh, we've got him out. Trying to see if you can find what's in that pile. And there's another target. Back around here somewhere. Over the back here, mate. Let's get the pinpointer. Oh, I see him. What do you got? Trash. It's a, a plate of some description. Do you reckon part of a padlock? Maybe. Part of a gun? Probably not. No? It's a brass clamp by the looks. Do you want to run that over the coil for us? We'll just make sure that was our target. Back and forth, nice and slowly. Now speed him up. Perfect. It's definitely our target. And look, there's a lot more in here to go. So I don't know what that one was. Unidentified object, non-flying. And look, another target over here. So we're gonna keep working our way through them. We're not gonna to show too much settings or adjusting or playing around with the mana core. We're literally running it straight out of the box, set up and charged today. So ideally, uh, look, if you were to buy, uh, buy an Equinox, uh, watching today, you know, you'd be able to see what we're digging, what we're finding, uh, and look, in future, we'll play, uh, play around with those settings and mix it up a little bit and see what makes it better. Uh, adjusting the recovery speed, the iron bias, everything, and really having a play around with it. So he's on the surface, said man. What is with all these random bits of metal? Flute. A flute. Let's see you play it. Oh. You, you don't know how to play a flute. Look, another bit of copper piping though, and that is obviously our target. Ring up are quite nice and repeatable. So let's go uh, keep going through this trash pile with the mana core and see what else we can find. All right, I've just uh, thrown the horseshoe button on, uh, the mana core for this next target, because before we actually did have the, uh, the horseshoe button off, meaning that we weren't hearing any of the rusty items within this junk or junk pile, a burnt off pile. So you can just hear we're getting those oh, nice odd signals. 
That almost sounds like a coin as well. And I'm trying to look and learn all about the 2D mapping screen down the bottom here. I'll zoom in there. Basically the 2D mapping there, it's a bit of a three-point system with the Manacora, I feel. You've got your audio, uh, your audio tone obviously indicating a target. You've got your visual, uh, that being your VDI, uh, your, um, uh, your tone, uh, sorry, your tone and your, uh, your visual on your screen. Getting myself confused. And then on top of that, you have the third point system of being your 2D mapping to help identify different signals and what you really want to dig. So we do have a nice signal over here though. We'll just go back to him. It's getting distracted with that other one. And Zed, you're the man. Pinpointing is pretty much directly under the shaft from what I've worked out so far. So let's just test that before you dig it, Zez. So with the pinpointing there, the man of course showing that target is just about there. Let's grab the pinpointer. Let's have a look how close it is. I've still got you zoomed in too, sorry. Look at that. Perfect. Right as there, man. Dig right there. Don't hit my finger. You're miles away. You gotta dig a bit more over here, buddy. He doesn't want to hit his target. Oh! There it is! Do you know what they are? Rubbish. Well, yeah, kind of, but do you know what they were? Uh plating. Plating, well, yeah, kind of good guess. Why would it have a hole in the middle there? Um, hold something. Whoop. Hold something, or it to be held into something. Not by you, you keep dropping it. How do you make your ice cubes at home? Uh, freezer. Freezer, with a? Uh, ice cube. Tray thingy. Tray thingy. Yeah. Well, back in the day, they didn't have plastic ice cube trays, fella. They had alloy ones. And this one here is alloy, and it's your divider. So you imagine your ice cube tray. Uh, imagine a big rectangle like that to go in your old Calvinator fridges. I wouldn't want to use something too dirty. <laughs> it wasn't that dirty back in the day, but you would have had all your dividers running down, and you would have had run, run, uh, one running through the middle. So that's an ice cube tray divider. And do you know how I know that? Because you have one. Well, I've found a ton of these in the past over the years, detecting for coins and relics, and I didn't know, or I never knew what they were, ever. And it was only due to one of our members commenting uh, there the other week, saying it was an ice cube tray. And I'm sorry, I can't remember who that was. If I uh, did, I would remember to shout out your name. If I remembered your name, I'd shout it out. But look, really cool ice cube tray. Uh, thanks to our member there, we know uh, exactly what they are. And they're cool to find. Let's find something else cool. Where'd our good target go over here? No I've sort of thrown him around. There's bolts and everything going on in here. I'm just keep picking up these things out of my shoe because I know one of them can do one of them. Well, don't. They're not nails or anything. They're just little wooden things. Like I step here and I get one attached to them. Don't put anything through your foot, will you? Ah, oh, you know what they are. Horns. Yeah, out of the box thorn. Yeah, it doesn't have boxes. <laughs> yeah. ah, they used it, so it's called box thorn because it's thorny, and they used it as hedgerows, especially over in England. It was uh, boxed in hedgerows. So that's what and they brought them over to Australia, and they started planting them along with the, uh, the pine trees. Well, back in the day, mate, the reason why the box thorn hedge was planted so thoroughly, uh, first off, during sediment, was because fencing was expensive. Fencing, fencing was a bit primitive. So you could plant this box thorn hedge. Correct. It would act as a fence. Look at this, says. With the mana core here, we've got the 2D mapping screen. So this target here, he's got me interested, but see how he's smudging that line right up to there? It's up to, up to the ferrous. So this is your non-ferrous conductivity line in the center here. Anything above or below is your ferrous, depending on its size. It's like a metal worm. So where, where's it smudging? Can you show, tell me where it's smudging? There. Yeah. So it's going upwards. So I dare say, that's a bit of rust right there. We've got him out, just like that, with a boot swipe. Doing the gold boot swipe. It's very easy here, though. 
It has. Aha. Aha, aha, aha. So there we go. Can you run that in front of the coil? I want to see what it's doing on the 2D mapping screen once again. Smudging and painting that indicator of it being a ferrous item. Look at that. So, and it's funny because those gal nails on the Equinox 800, on the Equinox 900, on the Vanquish, on the, uh, look, Elite Range, those gal nails seem to sing up just like a one or two dollar coin would be. And they give a one way signal. They sort of go 21 one way and nothing when you swing back the other way. Well, that's really interesting that uh, the 2D mapping screen on the Mana Core, you can really see that. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. As they've waving that nail over though, it's sort of painting and smudging it there, but then running it up the line uh, to it, uh, indicating ferrous. So your conductivity line sits in the center. Anything that falls on that line, generally non-ferrous, say looking brass, copper, coin, silver, anything that falls above or below, uh, you're looking, yeah, look at that. That's a great, I know. that's a great example. And you can see there falling in the lower and higher ferrous range, indicating the rust. Let's find a coin, because when we find a coin, it's going to show that nice grouping together with the stainless steel shovel. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right, let's find a coin, because when we find a coin, we're going to see that tight, packed group uh, grouping together uh, on that 2D screen. As I said, it's a three-point system, the Mana Core. Uh, you've got your tone, your audio, you've got your visual, uh, visual VDI, and then you've got your 2D mapping to go off too. So quite an impressive machine and the more i learn well the better we're going to get and we're going to learn it all together let's keep going all right working our way up the hill here away from the house and i'm pretty confident we've found something good it's showing a nice a vdi a, a nice visual indication on the screen with the number it's showing a nice tone or it's, it's uh, sounding off with a nice tone i should say and not to mention it's showing a gray indication on that 2d mapping screen I think I'm making it more dirtier as I go. Just locate him in the center there. And I'll just give you a look at that 2D mapping. He is bleeding off, off to the left a little bit there. But you gotta remember, this is also very uh, volcanic material or volcanic ground. You can see all the volcanic rocks thrown around there as we work our way up the barrier. This is very, very challenging ground for any detector. It really is. So let's just scrape the surface. Let's not. Let's grab the pinpointer. Sorry, Zaz. Choking you out in dust. Let's have a look. Oh, sounds like there's stuff everywhere. It's that volcanic soil once again. And there we go. We've got a non-ferrous beautiful target right here hang on hang on a second, man. just let's have a look because it's only dusty might have to get you to dig it in you will yeah right give him a stab avoid that area no 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 back a bit yep oh he scratched straight out of the top of it it was nearly my finger don't you kick dust up at me oh, he's so gentle ah, oh. <laughs> all right bingo bingo and it's not a coin but that is a great indication of what a coin would have sounded like had it been a coin. And look, the reason why you would have been bleeding sideways is these have a little pin that run through the center had to hold that, uh, that well, the cap on, I suppose you, you call it. Uh, but with the little pin in the center there, let's see if we can actually see it. They've got a little rusty pin in them. So the manacore actually was picking up the fact that it's uh, a little brass shell. This is a shotgun shell, obviously. Uh, but it was also picking up the fact that it can see uh, that it's got rust in it as well. So that is very impressive. I cannot get that uh, the uh, the cardboard wadding out that used to be in there. Zed man, can you do me honors and run that over the coil for us please though? So let's have a look there. We've got him sitting right on that conductivity line showing non-ferrous, but it is bleeding left and right. And a coin, well, from my understanding, and we've only found a few coins with this mana core. Uh, a coin should not do that, should group a tighter together, almost be a perfect circle, as long as there's no other surrounding targets interfering, uh, but a coin should be almost a perfect circle. So you can see there, it's bleeding a little bit left and right. So it's picking up on that rust or just showing that it's, well, it's a bit of a different, funny object. The more you're gonna learn that 2D screen, 
2D mapping too. I'll tell you what, it's really going to pay dividends. It really will. I have no doubt that learning that 2D screen, well, it's going to be such an advantage. Uh, you know, most other detectors, you've got a tone uh, and visual. Well, this detector, as I said, you've got three points of identification on any target. A tone, visual, well, tone, and two times, uh, types of visual to check out. And I said, once we learn that 2D mapping, we're going to master it. Let's get going. Uh, we've got the horseshoe button off at the moment. The reason being is because, I'll just give you a listen, there's so much stuff in this ground. Apart from the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, apart from the obvious sitting up on the surface, like glass and rust and, uh, look at that big plate there. It's a big something. Saz is still getting prickled. But, as you sort of walk along, oh, that's cool. Hey, Saz. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you know what we just found here? Wait, wait, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Get that away. Because I was going to go after that. I was swinging the detector up. No, 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 don't touch that piece either. It's all, hang on, hang on, just wait. We're, we're, we're showing the audience as we go. Look, we've got rust here, rust here, rusty don't touch it. bolt there. Oh, it. oh, sorry, sorry, lad. Look, we're just sort of showing you that. And even a, look, a bike chain under the coil. There's stuff everywhere, though. I'll tell you what, that little 11 inch coil, I reckon he would have hit this guy. That's a military button. I haven't said haven't said it just yet, but I did say to Zave when we first come here, keep your eye open, mate, because uh, an area that's been scratched and you know had the surface scratched like this and cleaned up, you never know what you're going to find. So Zaz is finding a heap of prickles. Look at that, Xavier. Check that out, mate. Can I touch it now? You can touch it now. What do we got? Um, a button. A button. So she's a World War II Australian military. Jeez. It is. Let's not define. It is a World War II, 1945 onwards, military Australian uniform ring. button. It's not a ring. It's just got the shank on the back still. How spectacular is that? Can you do me the honours? This should ring up a little bit lower. Can you do me the honours? That's what's been prickling you. Can you do the honours and throw it under the coil, please, for us? And we're going to give the audience a look, because, to be honest, I didn't actually hear it come up. I only just seen that. Oh, well, there you go. Thought that was going to be a lower number. Let's just clean the screen there a bit and show you the 2D mapping there, because that is most impressive. And I said, I'm going to learn that so much and get a lot better at this. Button. Button. <laughs> so shovel button do the shovel again bleeding glass. glass does nothing go back to the button very cool all right thanks Xavier. we just scored ourselves a really cool button you can keep that one if you want mate but look at this we've got chain well that was our next target do you want to swing over he's part of an internal keg tap I did find him with the detector. I looked down inside him in the ground, and that's when I put the camera on. But look, just every every uh, square inch of this place is riddled with junk. So nice 92 there on the detector. And I said that is part of... Difference. That's the internal piece of a keg tap or an old spigot tap, mate. So you would have turned him off, turned him on, turned him off, turned him on. Let the beer things. flow. All right, that's cool. So beer tap. We haven't got a coin yet, we've got a beer tap, we've got a lot of rubbish, and we've got a button. That's very cool. So you're going to put him in the pouch, you're going to put him in your pocket. Put him in the pouch so you don't lose him. You can keep him later and put him in your collection. Yeah. Well done. Let's keep going. Move out of the way. Move, move. I'm going to run over you to the detector. Well, I can't wait to tell Matty about that, how the button coming out of the crown. That was spectacular. He's going to love it. And the, uh, the owner here, Matt... I actually hunt another one of his properties just down the road and he actually was as I said concreting my backyard the other week and I said to Matt oh, I've got all that stuff still sitting in a container for, uh, for you uh, you can come and grab it mate anytime you want so I'll still yet to catch up with Matt and pass on all the stuff from about a year ago oh there's a nice signal there too Go after this one first. Bit of a lower signal, and then we've got a high 90 up in mind? front. Hey, I got this. No, no, mind. Listen. Can you dig that one for me, mate? Yeah. 
You hear the detector getting a little bit of interference there too. Uh, we are running 30 sensitivity though. So very impressive. Just gonna turn that sensitivity down a bit. It is rust. But let's dig it. Yep, let's dig it out. Like your shovel says. See what it is. See? Your shovel says dig it. Dig it. Thanks to Tiger for that one. No detecting that, only dig it. Well, it tells you what you gotta do with the shovel. Dig it. I saw something that had like a little coin thingy. You took it away. No, our target's still in the hole, mate. The problem is, it's just so many other targets sitting there. Let's stand back up with the detector, have a look. Because I'm itching to go after that 90. Let's have a look. Oh, it sounds good. Look at it. There you go, you can go after it. We're, we're going after a rusty nail. You can go after the 90 now. All right, let's go after the 90. There's another rusty nail. Well, it's actually went down a bit. So you were lying. 81, 82, surface target, and it's staying on the uh, on the conductivity line. Conductivity line, I should so you say. Lied to us. It's not I'm going to have to take away Let's your have a look. privileges. Oh, please don't. Nope. You lost protecting privileges. So it's quite back. a big target by the looks. Ah. Oh. There it is. But what is it? Don't damage it. Oh, I'll just show you too. The reason why we're staying over here, like I'd love to get a ride around this house today. As I said, where <laughs> no one else would have been. We're not going to be though, because look at what's over there on the corner. There is a swarm of bees. Your best friend. Oh, I don't well, like bees. Friend. There you go. You got a fuel pump. I don't like bees. No, that's not a fuel pump. No. Oh, I know exactly what this is. I used to use these every single day. Oh. A what? A pickle to throw at Macca's window. A pickle? No. no we no, we no, actually... You said you used to go to Macca's a lot of extra pickles and then throw them at the window and have a race with your brother. We did not. I've been telling you too much. We never did that. We were good kids. We sell these at work. I sold some of these the other day, actually, and I don't even sell these. But I... Sorry. It wasn't my area, but I, I just went out and helped the customer anyway. What are these? Uh, they are things that you're not meant to sell, but you sell. Well, it's not my area. I sell, uh, I sell tractor parts and agricultural parts, and I do breakdown pitches and uh, spare parts yes. interpreting. I don't uh, generally sell. Oh, it's a thingy. It's a thingy that goes in the car, the tractor, so it's a pistol. No, think dairy. It's a pistol. How do you milk the cows? With the others. Things. Well, they have the udders. I don't even know how to These go them. on the udders. Put your finger out. No, thank you. Put your finger out. They no, go like this. Something. That's your teat. That's that your teat. Me. That's your udder. Put your thumb out. That's your udder. And your, your milking cup goes. Bugs. There's probably a spider in there. That's a milking cup. You literally said it, that in your milking cup. Yep. I could have told you that five minutes ago, but I wanted to drag it out. Righto. We found a milking cup. We can milk the cows. It actually says. One teat at a time. What does it say? Unity locked. Uh, utility something block end. Universal inflation. They're either D Laval or Alpha Laval. That's what we sell at work. D Laval. All right. Let's keep going. Put that one in your top pocket. And we'll move on to the next. All right. We're back from just putting the windows down on the car. We don't want it warming up too much. Our drinks are inside there. And Zez, Zed man, has been digging out a target for us. What is it? It's a target. It's gold! No. It's a massive chunk of gold! No. It's lead. How, uh, how many grams? None. It's about a six grammer, mate. Nice little slug. It's not in gold. It's about 700 bucks. Put him in your top pocket. It's, <laughs> it's the wrong colour. Six grams of the wrong colour gold. And not that you'd find it out here anyway. Bugger. I said before to Xavier, when we first started today, make sure you keep your eye open, mate. Especially considering this area's all been scraped. That sounds nice. Uh, but look, I've uh, just looked ahead there a bit further. I don't know if Saz has spotted him just yet. A bottle. A bottle of water. A bottle of water. 
don't think it's a bottle of water. You want to grab him, mate? Mine. And you know, I know where the bottle pit is to this site. And I reckon we could find a ton more bottles. Do you want to walk over and have a look at the bottle pit? Is it over there? It's just over there, just near the poly tank. So we might go over and have a look, show the audience for anybody that hasn't seen before. But first off, we'll finish this little trashy area and also dig that target sitting under our coil. There you go. Bottle of water. Bottle of water. Right, where's our target, Zazman? There he is. I thought we'd lost him then. And look at that 2D mapping. Just getting my head around it still. But look at that tight pack grouping circle that's got going on there. That could be a coin. That could be a coin. Put your bottle of water down and start digging. Oh, hang on. Let's pinpoint him first. Because I'm still learning pinpointing with the man of call too. Everything seems to be directly under the shaft so far, where the shaft meets the coil. And shaft. And I reckon so with this target. So let's dig there. I was probably a little bit far back, but let's dig in front. And I'll steal the shovel off, says. Let's dig out and see what we got. All right, let's have a look. Right on him. Volcanic soil is very challenging, I will say. Because you can see the pinpointer goes off sort of everywhere. All right, there's a bit of rust. So one rusty nail. There's something else down here. There's still a target in the hole. Ah, oh, there it is. The old trickster. A toothpaste tube. Could be a toothpaste tube. It's not a coin though, unfortunately. It was a sort of smudging off to the left and the right. Like it wasn't a tight, packed, perfect circle. And I expect that's what we'll see when we go over and test some coins. If we don't find some in this hunt, I do have some over at the car we can test before the end of this video to show you a look. I don't know whether he's a toothpaste tube though, but he's a nice old alloy tube of some description. And we're going to try and get on and find that coin as I said. If not, we'll test it at the end of the video and show you the difference between a non-ferrous item and a ferrous item. Look, there's a bee! Ah, quick, run! <laughs> Seriously, that bee won't leave my hole alone now. So I can't shut it. No, don't, don't shut him in there. Then his mates will come and attack us all. What, you got another one? Yeah. All right, we'll come back and shut that hole. It's yours for now. Ah. All right, now's a good time to go look for some bottles and show Zaz the bottle pit. Do you have a little bit of age to some of the bottles here too? I'll just, just show you this one here. That is an old beer. Look at him, quite old num, and num. quite broken. Num num, you shouldn't know what beer tastes like. It shouldn't be num num just yet, you're too young. All right, let's go over and have a look at the bottle pit. I remember it took me about all of two hours to find it last time I was here, or the first time I was here with Andrew that day. It didn't take long at all. And the reason being is because when you're looking for bottle pits, especially in this type of country, it's generally they're always up on the up on the rocks there, because it's unused land or it's it's unusable land, I should say. Uh, what do you do with land that's full of rocks and uh, you know big barriers like that? All you can really do uh, is throw your rubbish on top of it. And there was no rules or regulations back in the day, so that is what they did. You can see old mate has um, the old farmer. He's put a bit of a, a rock wall up there too, like a bit of a rock ramp. Had to get his machinery up and over there. Maybe at one point this is all blocked off, who knows. But the bottle pit, Zed man, is just around the back here. We're watching out for snakes too, because this is snake country. Through and through, on the rocks, in the stones. So there it is there. So it didn't take us too long to find. Andrew and I have dug this out a couple of years ago. Uh, look, we got a lot of bottles out of here. A lot of cool bottles too. 
and a lot that we even threw back in are because well got them time and time again you know the old perfumes they're so common a lot of these bottles we just end up throwing back in here so i think actually some of these i don't think um i think we we're supposed to come back and grab and we never did so there we go got some dexal uh, some chicory bottles chicory. felton's milk of magnesia they're a cool bottle do you want to take one of those home? Yeah, all the milk of magnesia is spilled out. So very cool. And even got some of the old, oh look, there's a little ink bottle. He's pretty cool. You could save him as. Yeah, we've got the old plate. That's what I was going to show here. So this would have been probably the plate that went around the, uh, look, the brick half, maybe. Uh, look at that. That's two of the same piece. Oh, that's a matching uh, break right there. And look at the different patina. So this would have went, um, yeah, look, no doubt around the um, around the fireplace, around the bottom of it, uh, in a bit of a, a bit of a square. Very cool. Lots of rubbish and bottles. Awesome. Let's uh, let's get back on the detector now, mate. What do you reckon? Okay. Okay. All right, back on the detector now. Those bees are really giving us a battle too. They are hanging around uh, both sides of the house, so we really can't venture too far from where we are here. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, didn't realize they'd be so active today All right, that is our next target though a nice high signal a 9798 Just hoping it's not a big plate of steel Could be another milking cup Well, I do need four I've only got one so can we dig right there mate just off to the side? Yeah, I think you've got him. I hope you've got him nailed don't scratch me cow tag, will ya? No, I will. You're doing a great job digging today. Aha! There you go, scratch the cow tag. There is the cow tag, all scratched and beaten up. Thanks a lot. Oh, well, <laughs> you just smashed your cow tag against the rock. I know, I know. Just to clean him, I did. Uh, look, we've got an old can though on that one. Don't know if he would have been pressurised originally. And the top's blown off him. Don't know, but an old alloy can. That's why he's ringing up so high. And he's such a big surface target. So such a big, big target in the ground. Not like a coin, little tiny target. We still haven't found one yet, but that's okay. Cause this site uh, is, well, it's, it's known for its relics, not so much its coins. And we found that out the last few times we've been here. In actual fact, well, they are, but in actual fact, I don't think that, um, I don't think we've ever found a coin here, Zed man. And what I'd really like to do is get in the old house, because if I get in the old house, we'll be able to run the pinpointer through the floor and even test the mana core in there, because I know that there's no boards on the floor. Yeah, I think the bees are going to win, are going to win the day somehow. Because I'm not keen on getting stung. <laughs> we just dug a 40 on the screen of the mana core there and by surprise i've got out what looks to be part of an old fob watch pretty cool and it looks to it looks like there's more still in there we've got the pinpointer off turn him back on We've got bits and pieces of metal in there maybe or maybe it's the volcanic soil so in this case we do stand up we'll pocket the fob watch, uh, fob watch piece and we'll stand up and give it another swing over see if anything else comes of it oh well, another good target here on the mana core we're going to give you a look also going to give you a look at the back of the house here i really wanted to get into it so there's our signal there and we'll sit the mana core down carefully Cool old spigot tap there. He's somewhere there, Zaz. I'm gonna show you the back of this house here really quickly, but we're not gonna get in it because the bees are the bees are coming out everywhere. Everywhere, man. They're circling us even. There's just a massive hive hiding around the corner there of that wall, and they're all sort of flying in and around here. So look, we're just gonna stay away from them. the bees win the day today. They can have have that side of the house. Uh, over here, mate. I was right. 
right about there underneath that bit of weed let's just hang on i just want to see with the pinpointer first we're still just learning that pinpointing on the manicore it's good to show right he's somewhere there he's deep go after him i was going to somewhere in the middle there above that grass weed uh, keep going keep going it's all right you make a mess we'll fill him in again it's only a paddock i reckon you may have him let's have a look problem with this grounds as so volcanic like literally no matter where you put the pinpointer it just goes off that's a bit of China, China. I know. That's not our target. I know, I just wanted to make sure. All right, where'd he go? I don't know. <laughs> Good test for the manicure, I tell you. Such a hard sight to work. All right, let's stand back up. Let's have a listen with the manicure. See if our target's out of the hole or not. It certainly isn't. Off to the side here, mate. Just open up this back half here for us, can you? Mr. Muscles. Thanking you. Whoop. Don't throw it everywhere. <laughs> That's all right, I'm joking. Right, he's there. You're right on him. So close to being a coin. That was nearly my finger. I should keep him out of the way, shouldn't I? Yeah, really should. I really should, that was my fault. Oh, I thought that was going to be a coin right near the water tank. Here we go. A bottle top. And he's going to be a Roselle sauce lid, I dare say. He should say Rosella on him. I found a ton of these in the past. Upside down. Now it's not. Rosella. So look, we were close, but no cigar on that one. It was grouping tight together, just like a coin would. And I said, if we don't find a coin, which we haven't yet. Oh dear. And we will show you at the end of the video back at the car. Just what I mean. Oh, that's a great, great example. You can see just how tightly it's packing there together on the conductivity line. So showing a nice signal. But it's a coin. Uh, it's not a coin, I should say. But it's a coin. No, it's not. It's a Rosella bottle source lid. So let's pick him up, put him in the pouch, keep going for a little bit longer. See if we can get a coin and not get stung by a bee. <laughs> All right, what just happened, Zed Man? You got attacked by a bee. You got attacked by a bee. We both got attacked by a bee. I think we've eluded him, though. We're hiding off in the tree here at the moment. I said to Zave, hide in the trees. He won't be able to find us. He won't be able to see us. Oh, dear. I ran up and back about three times. I just heard this bee going, trying to bite me on the head. And then as I ran past Xavier, he started attacking Xavier. I said to Zave, run, mate, run. So Zay was running as fast as he could. I was still trying to catch my breath. Zay was running as fast as he could. <laughs> He's yelling out, Dad, can you take him? Can you take the bee off me? Like I was supposed to grab him and put him in my po yeah, pocket. That's a <laughs> Oh dear, so he's running up, up and back going, Dad, grab him, grab him, grab the bee, can you take him? And then he latched onto me again and I'm running for my life. So here we are hiding in the trees, long story short. Yeah. That was a funny episode. The bees are definitely winning today, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, never mind, we'll keep going and uh, look, another five, ten minutes, see if we can pluck out a coin. If not, we'll do a test when we get back to the car. Oh, that is exciting! Oh, that is super exciting. We didn't even have to use the detector. Well, we sort of did, but we didn't. Saz, come over here. Come check this bad boy out. And we're not touching it, but there we go. Poke. We found a coin, Basil. Can I poke it? You didn't and touch it. he's a penny. Don't touch it. Touch, 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 poke, touch, poke. <laughs> he is going to be a penny. Let's just pick him up quickly. Show you the patina. I don't know what he's going to be. Let's put him back down. So there's where he's sitting, quite clearly, little impression in the ground, sitting on the surface. He may have been brought up with the dozer when Matt's been clearing up all the box on hedge here, pushing it all through. There we go. I think that's our first coin for this site. Let's run over him. I knew we could do it. High five. So it's still getting prickled. Don't leave that in your hand when you high five me. High five. 
Patience, persistence, perseverance. Prickles. Prickles all pay off. So let's have a look at that tight packed grouping, a 2D mapping screen here. I'm going to zoom in when we swing over this target. And we can see there falling right on the conductivity line. Just trying to find the sweet spot on the coil. Up the front's pretty good. In the middle's good also. But you can see there 60, 61, 62. And you can see there that tight packing, a grouping together little smudge on the 2D mapping screen. So let's, um, <laughs> so he's getting attacked by bees again. Let's try and grab, uh, we've got something rusty in the pouch to grab quickly. Have we, haven't we? No, we should. Now let's try and find something rusty. Uh, we'll put beside that coin and we'll show you a look at the difference. Rightio, rusty bolt is acquired. He looks like that. We're gonna throw him down on the surface, right beside that penny. Uh, we're going to put our horseshoe button on because we did have him off there before. One thing's cool too, you'll notice with the mana core, when it runs over a bit of rust, uh, you basically get that red indicator, the red line coming up under the target ID number. Which, that's really cool, I think. Just confirming that, yes, there is rust there. So we can see there, let me zoom in once again. That wind's getting crazy, so I'm trying to keep my back to it. Block it out. You can see there on the 2D mapping though, how that line uh, on the 2D mapping screen, the line smudges up into the ferrous, into the rust uh, section. We run over that coin and we've got that nice tight packed non-ferrous target ID sitting straight on that conductivity line. And you can see how it tight packs that nice round circle. There's no smudging, no smearing. It's not venturing off like the ferrous, uh, ferrous target does right here. Well, the bees are out in force. So, look, what we're going to do though, that's a good example there, we're going to pick up our coin, we're going to pick up our rusty nail, because we found him, and uh, look, that's just how I work, take everything that we, uh, that we handle basically. So, we're going to take the rusty nail, we're going to take the coin, I don't even know what date, what year it is, and we're going to take those two, and we're going to get back to the car, and we're going to show you a look at everything coming out today with the brand new Mind Lab Mana Core. Rightio guys, as you can see, we're behind the Prado and we've got Z-Man here to show us what we did today with the brand new Mind Lab Mana Core. Well, brand new for me anyway, brand new for Z-Man too. We've never ran this machine on video. This is the first hunt. So would you like to take us through what we've got? Bit of rubbish on the side. Yeah, lots of rubbish. Lots of rubbish and a few nails. And what, nice. what are these again? Ice cube things. Ice cube plate trays. And we found a couple more of them as we went. A few uh, bits and bobs, the alloy uh, alloy uh, tin, part of an old door handle by the looks. He's, he's actually cast steel. Uh, and then, moving on to the other pieces, the big chunk of brass, looks like an old clamp. What do we have here, our six grammar? Lead. Piece of lead. <laughs> lead. <laughs> uh, shotgun shells are coming up nice on the 2D uh, mapping screen there on the mana core. Uh, we had part of the fob watch by the looks of him. And uh, an interesting little piece, I don't quite kettle know handle. what he is, a kettle handle. Yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know, don't know, I'm uncertain. We also got uh, the inside of an old spigot tap, as you can see where the liquid would have flowed through when you turn him off and on. And the best piece for today, what is it, Z-Man? Uh, army button. Australian Military Forces button. button. Coat button, jacket button. And we did get out a coin, where did that coin go? Did you have it? No. Oh, I've lost it already. Must be in the pouch. Let's find it. There it is. <laughs> Here I was looking in my pockets for it. I could not find it. Uh, so look, a nice old penny. He's too hard to ID, unfortunately. Uh, we cannot get a date off him. But we did it. We found a coin uh, with the Mind Lab Mana Core and giving a bit of an example of the 2D mapping screen uh, between different targets. The rusty targets, ferrous items are coming up and down of that conductivity line and the nice items, the brass, the copper, the silver, if we had a found any silver, it all hits on that conductivity line spot on and basically shows, well, three points of identification. So we did also do a bit of a hunt there the other day. Uh, well, these are actually a combination of two hunts. Uh, so we did a hunt up in Queensland on an oval and we got out a bangle. Uh, we also got out a funny uh, brass piece. I don't know what that is. Uh, we also got out another brass or copper pipe. 
I'm just going to stack it all up on Zaz's knee here. Uh, the sun kiss can uh, come from a second hunt, and so did the rest of these coins here. Uh, so we did attempt to get out there the other week uh, and basically shoot a video, our first video on the Manicor, and we hunted up another sports oval. Uh, we did get a few tin cans, uh, the sun kiss, the bottle top. Uh, we've got a ring pull. We've got a rusty nail. Uh, we did also manage to snag a few $1. coins, a $2 coin, a $1 coin, a $0.02 cent coin, a $0.50 cent coin, uh, another two cent coin, another two cent coin, and two one cent coins, and a bit of a car part. So look out, we're on fire with the Manicourt, we're off to a great start, we just need to film and share and show more as we go, and we'll do that as we go. So anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed, we'll be back again next time on the Manicourt, or even on another machine, who knows, I hope to see you there, and be sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you on the next adventure. Cheers! See you next time. Big ears. Thank <laughs> you.